Hi everyone, this is just a short tutorial on how you might use OBS or open broadcasting software to enhance your presentations in Zoom. So this is a screen capture of a recent presentation that I gave in Zoom. What you see here is a transparent presentation layer superimposed over a live video. Essentially I'm running a slide deck over my video versus having to screen share separately. I think that this produces a nice integrated effect with the video and the text. I'm also able to quickly bring in multimedia elements into my presentation. The GIFs and videos that you see here were embedded into my slide deck and are now easily superimposed over my video feed. So the first thing you'll need to do is download and install OBS Studio. Uh, it's free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. It's quite popular in the streaming segment of YouTube. Uh, very powerful and certainly worth getting to know. The next thing you have to do is to download and install OBS Virtual Cam. This is a plugin that extends the capability of OBS to become a virtual cam that you can use with Zoom and other uh, software, video conferencing software like Google Meet, for instance. While this step may seem a bit more complex, if you scroll to the bottom of this page, you'll be given steps as to how to proceed. So if you're using Windows, you should be good to go at this point. If you're on a Mac, there's one more step. Virtual Cam compatibility has been disabled for the Mac platform. Uh, to fix that, you'll have to do a couple of things. First of all, you'll have to download something called Xcode from the App Store. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. And then you'll have to type a line of code into Terminal. I'm going to put that information in the notes under this video, just in case the guidance changes on this. All right, so we finally made it to OBS Studio, and what you're seeing here is Studio Mode. And I'm not going to show you everything here because it's actually a quite complex piece of software, uh, but I'm going to show you everything that you need to know relation, in relation to Zoom. Uh, so first of all, um, the Sources pane over here, I think that's going to be important. Uh, essentially, these are all the things that you can add. Uh, you'll notice there's different audio inputs. You can add a browser, for instance. Uh, images, you could put various video capture devices, that would be your cameras, uh, all sorts of things there. And then over here is are your scenes. And the scenes are essentially how you arrange these on a screen. And if you're thinking about this in Zoom, whatever's going to be on here, the way that you arrange all of these sources is going to replace what you would normally see as just your face from a camera on Zoom. All right, I'm gonna talk a bit more about scenes and sources. As you see over here, I have scenes. I actually have one from before that I showed you before. Uh, and I have a brand new demo that I started. And of course, you can always add as many scenes as you want by pressing that plus button. And then you can just go through, uh, alternate through scenes while you're in Zoom if you'd like. Each scene can have one or more elements uh, or sources. And so for instance, while I'm in the demo um, scene, I can go plus, and I might want to add a, um, a video capture device. And so right now I have one existing, so I've already configured this one, and you can see that there. I can make it any size I'd like. I can move it anywhere on the screen. And then I can actually go, uh, if I wanted to, I can add another video source, so another video capture device here. Uh, I'll go uh, create new, and I'll just do, this is going to be my iMac cam, I'm going to press OK, I'm going to go to find my device, and there's my FaceTime iMac cam built in, and I don't know why you'd want to have more than one camera, um, but you could put as many as you wanted there. Uh, then you might add, say, some, uh, maybe an image, for instance, and I, what I'll do over here is maybe add a GIF, I know I have one saved on my uh, desktop, so I can browse for a GIF or image or video or whatever type of media you'd like. So I will go to desktop, bring this in. If it is a GIF, it won't actually run right now, but when you're actually in Zoom, when you're presenting, you'll see it run there. So that's just an example of how you can put elements on the screen uh, and drag them across. All right, so I'm going to uh, go through and demonstrate uh, that original premise that I showed you where you have a video camera 
And then you have this uh, slightly transparent um, PowerPoint or keynote uh, in front of you that you can uh, use. So what I'm gonna do, what I've just done is I went down to the plus button, uh, I created a new scene, and now I'm gonna add elements to that scene. All right, so you have a scene called Demo 2. Of course, you could call this anything you'd like. Maybe you wanna name it after a course, but the important thing is that you have, or you're working with a particular scene and you have it clicked uh, or selected. Um, then beside the, that window, if you're in the uh, standard layout, uh, you should see the sources window, and then I'm gonna hit the plus button. And in this case, I'm going to add a video capture device or, or a webcam. Now, you can create a new webcam. Uh, if, you, if you haven't done this before, you're gonna have to do that. Uh, this will allow you to explore the different uh, webcams or video capture devices that you have connected to your, uh, to your computer. If, if you've done this already, then you'll have a list of ones that you've used before. In this case, I have my DSLR uh, connected to my computer. Uh, so I'm gonna click on A73 cam and that'll bring up the webcam. And of course, I can put this anywhere on the uh, screen. Or in this case, what I'm gonna do and what I'd recommend for this particular effect is to make it full screen. All right, before I go to the next step, um, I want to talk briefly about uh, the, the use of PowerPoint or Keynote slides and particularly the backgrounds. So what I've done here is I've created a PowerPoint or a Keynote in this case, a slide, a slide deck. And what I've done is created the background as a solid green. You could do this as a blue or any color that you can select in a chroma key app. Uh, essentially, all of this green uh, real estate is going to be transparent. And what I'll see on my screen are these particular areas. And I've actually done this for you. Uh, I've, I've added templates to the notes so you can use them whether you use PowerPoint or Keynote. So you can start uh, from that. So you don't have to bother trying to find the, the background for instance. And so essentially what I've done here is just giving you a couple of different options uh, of a slide. Uh, and of course I'm viewing this in presentation mode which is gonna be really important. Um, and you can try, say, a white background that would be transparent. You can try with a background. Um, it depends on what's behind you, really, to, to make this work. So essentially, that's going to be really important, is you're going to have to choose a slide with a uh, solid layer color that, that would work well in a chroma key situation, because that's the next step here. All right, I'm back to OBS, and what I want to do now is while I'm in... Uh, the demo two scene, I'm going to add another element. In this case, it's going to be uh, the keynote presentation or the PowerPoint presentation that I just showed you in the previous step. Um, so you're going to go to plus and then you're going to go down. Uh, you're not going to be able to see this, but down this particular list, you'll see at the very bottom, it'll say window capture. And so you click on window capture uh, and it'll ask you to create a new one. So I'm going to go and call this keynote two. Um, and then what you'll do here is this window opens up and from this list, you're gonna actually gonna see a long list of basically everything that's open up uh, on, your, on your desktop. And down here, you should be able to see this. I'm gonna choose Keynote, uh, called it demo, that's the file name. And I'm gonna click on that and you'll notice that that brings this up as a layer. Uh, again, I have this in presentation mode, so it's actually in presentation mode depending on your, uh, the way that you've set your uh, PowerPoint up or, and your screen up, uh, there might be some black bars on the side, but you can deal with that by uh, making this big enough or of course going back to the PowerPoint, PowerPoint or Keynote uh, and adjusting there as well. But now you have a layer, but, but of course, now you've got a problem where the video is gone and I'll show you how to deal with that in the next step. All right, last step here, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you a couple of important buttons. Notice this, uh, this eyeball here. Um, this is just essentially, uh, you can make each layer visible or invisible. Of course, you can move these things around if you wanted to, if you wanna put them in a different order, uh, that's also possible as well. And when you're managing these and trying to move them around, it's really helpful to use the lock. Uh, the lock will just uh, make sure that you don't uh, accidentally change things or move things around. 
uh, this is really quite important as well. So I'm going to lock my camera layer, but I'm not going to lock my keynote layer. And what I'm going to show you here is uh, the important piece here. I'm going to uh, right click on this or I'm going to on a Mac press uh, control click. And then at the very, very bottom, I'll see if I can get this on the bigger window. Uh, you'll see where it says filters. And this is where this is really important. There's a, a number of filters you can play around with here. Um, but at the bottom, the one that we want is under effect filters. We're going to hit the plus button. And what we're going to do is click on chroma key. Uh, so we'll bring up the chroma key and we can just leave it called as chroma key or something else you'd want. Um, and essentially the magic is done for you. Uh, you can see that the chroma key, I can see this, the, the uh, slide at the same time uh, as the video. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that you can do to adjust if you don't like the way that the, the, videos, uh, the video looks or the way that the uh, presentation looks. There's a number of different adjustments that you can use. You'll notice that the key color type here is green. And that's if you were using a different background, you'd have to use a different color here. Obviously, if I did blue, it's not going to work. And that's why we chose green for the, the end of the slides. And this opacity is kind of a neat one. You can make this quite uh, uh, transparent if you want to play, play with these effects. As I mentioned in the presentation, I did different things as well, where uh, if I actually run the presentation, I can see uh, I've tried different things. The black doesn't seem to work very well with that particular size of fonts and the thin font. White seems to look a bit uh, better in this particular case, but you can kind of see that it's really quite transparent over here. Uh, it's a kind of a neat effect. Um, so play with this. Uh, I think it's worthwhile uh, taking a look at and learning, and I hope you enjoy this. So this is really just the final step of putting everything together, connecting OBS to Zoom and showing you how that works. Uh, essentially, what you want to do is you've got OBS running, you've got everything set up the way you want it. Uh, then I'm going to start a new meeting in Zoom. It's connecting. Um, and you may see this particular uh, screen. Um, essentially, what's happened here is when I go to the video options in Zoom, you'll notice that you have your regular options. You may not have as many as I do, but you'll have probably at least a camera. Um, what I've chosen here, so for instance, if I just wanted to use the camera, I can use this webcam over here, for instance, um, which I, is not one of my favorite ones, but, uh, or I can use the OBS virtual camera. Still nothing there. So the last trick is when you're in OBS, make sure that you go to tools and start virtual camera. That's that uh, added plugin that you had to, uh, to uh, bring into this and to use that. That's what uh, uh, it adds to the tools menu. And you can click on uh, start. If that doesn't show up yet, uh, it's probably because you haven't had hit the transition button. But once you do that, essentially what you see here on that side is what you're going to, what everyone's going to see in Zoom. Um, and depending on what you do over here with your PowerPoint or Keynote, you can go through your slides, you can see different things. And of course, even if you get into video, there's a few uh, slides later in my presentation that have video. So you don't necessarily have to be on screen all the time. Um, for instance, I have other um, videos that actually go right over top of me. You can kind of see me in the background, but um, it's really really not that noticeable. But uh, you know, I hopefully um, this is the type of thing that you wanted to do when, uh, the, when there was interest in doing something like this. I think it does uh, accelerate or enhance your Zoom game a bit. Uh, and, and I like the possibilities for this. Uh, of course, it, it, there's a bit of a learning curve, but it's really not that bad. If you have any questions about this, feel free to uh, comment uh, down below, uh, or certainly just hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Corosa, C-O-U-R-O-S-A, and I'll be very happy to, to help get you working.